Okay, who here has a garden? There's some gardeners. Who has pests in their garden? Ooh, okay. Um, so pests are like an inev inevitable uh, part of gardening. They are just going to show up. Um, there are some things that we do to prevent the pests from coming and things that we can do before they get there. Um, but I'm going to talk about what we, we've started using on the farm that is, has like a very low environmental impact. Um, it's actually a soap that we've been making and you can use um, different plants to make some other solutions to mix with it. Um, also, if you have questions while I'm just rambling, please ask any questions. Um, <clears throat> okay. On the farm here, the first thing that we can do, well, there's a few ways to, to manage pests. And one is to physically remove the pests from the garden. So if you're checking your garden at least once or twice a week, you need to go walk through the garden, check underneath the leaves. And if you have a small enough garden, you can just go and, and pick the bugs off, okay? That's kind of the first thing that we try to do, not on like our farm scale, it's a little difficult. Um, but if you just have like a few raised beds, I would go through and just and pick the bugs out. Um, another thing that we do is to try and is biological control, which we plant lots of pollinators around the farm and we attract good bugs to help us keep the balance. And good bugs will eat a lot of the bad bugs. So um, ladybugs, lacewings, I'm sorry, I had a print out and I did not get a printed out for you, but we can send it out if you're on Give Pulse, I can send out like the little cheat sheet. But planting lots of different types of flowers because all different types of bugs have different mouth parts and the shape and the size of the flower will attract different pests. Okay, so sometimes you want bigger blooms for like bugs that have bigger mouth parts. Sometimes you want tiny little flowers, so other bugs with smaller mouth parts will come in. Um, you need to have pollinators in the garden as well because ladybugs eat aphids, okay? They go to the garden, they'll eat, 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 eat all the aphids. When they run out of food, they need something else to eat and they will eat the nectar and the pollen of those flowers, okay? If you don't have any flowers, once they get the aphids, they're gonna go and fly away and go find something else, okay? So to, to keep that balance, you just need to have pollinators in the garden as well. Always try to, yeah. Keep the native bugs, because once they eat the aphids, you say they leave, but keep the native bugs there, the flowers need to be dominant more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we plant, we're always planting pollinators. Like I can, we can walk back there and show you, like there's just different types of flowers blooming at all, all times. I bought native bugs and then it's like mom and they just go. Yeah. Okay, so you can buy ladybugs, you can buy lacewing larvae, and like it'll come in a packet to have like eggs. I've never actually bought them. Or were they alive? They were in a jar? And they were, okay. So you can buy mature ladybugs. The problem is, once they eat all the aphids, they're going to go to the neighbor's garden. I mean, they're going to help your neighbor out, but <laughs> they, they are going to go away. Now, when people grow in like greenhouses or indoors, like if people have like an infestation on their house plants, some people release them inside. But it's better for like a greenhouse kind of setting. So like they will stay in there and make sure they eat everything, clear everything out. Um, but yeah, if you have the blooms, if you have flowers, like the ladybugs will just come. You won't even have to, to buy them. Um, oh no! Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I actually brought this to show y'all. Um, we have a ladybug right here. <clears throat> but I want to show y'all what the actual larva looks like. Okay, Let's see if y'all can see this. You see this little bug right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the larva stage of the ladybug. If you see these in your gardens, do not squish them. This is going to turn into a ladybug. And these, um, the larvae and the ladybugs eat like hundreds of aphids a day. Like they will just eat, 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 eat. If you see a video of it online, it's really, really cool. Um, they just like devour, they just like snack on them. Um, and then obviously here's an uh, adult ladybug. Whew, that's a good question. I'm not an entomologist. I'm not <laughs> really sure. Um, I will say last week <clears throat> when I was harvesting, 
I saw like every other plant had a few larvae on it. And when I went back yesterday, I saw beetles. So maybe a week or two or so. It's not super long. I mean, they don't have like a long lifespan anyway. Um, but yeah, it's good to know the life stages of the bugs because they look very different. Like they change, even the stage, there's another stage I was trying to find it between the larva and the adult beetle. Um, and it looks weird. And I know that people are squishing them. It just looks like some crazy beetle. It doesn't have the same spots as a ladybug. Um, so don't just look it up and be sure not to squish them because they are doing lots of good work. Um, they eat more than aphids too, which is really, really good. Um, white flies are good bugs. There's assassin bugs. They're good, but they will eat anything. They will eat honeybees as well. So it depends on what, how much you're willing to take in your garden. Um, but they will eat bigger bugs that are really hard to manage too, like cucumber beetles and stuff. Um, so that's biological control. Another thing that we do is trap cropping, which we will plant things that the bugs are more attracted to. So there's like, um, we have squash fine borer, and there's a type of squash that has this chemical that's way stronger in this blue Hubbard squash than in like the regular cucumbers and squash. So the bugs will go to that blue Hubbard squash because whatever chemical is higher in that. So we'll attract it to the blue Hubbard squash and then we will only spray the blue Hubbard squash to kill them. So we won't even spray our other crop. That's what we're trying to do. We're experimenting with it right now. But there is research that has, has done that. Um, and then, okay, so physical control, biological control, and the last thing is chemical control, okay? <clears throat> even organic pesticides are super, super expensive and they are still chemicals. Like, even though some of them are like derived from plants, like they're still really toxic. You need to wear gloves to, to use them. They're still pretty dangerous. Um, yeah, but they're very, very expensive as well. So we do not use that. Um, I know I've talked about this before, if you've been out here, the Jadam organic farming. We've started using these practices. Um, <clears throat> Jadam means people that work as nature or people that work like nature does. So we've been making our own fertilizer, but they also tell you how to make your own pesticides, okay? Um, and the main pesticide that we use is actually just a simple soap, okay? It is made from potassium hydroxide, I think is also called lye, which they, it's like old soap making thing, and canola oil and water. Okay. It, I'll give you the recipe too, but it's potassium hydroxide, um, canola oil, and water. And I'll, I'll let you take pictures. And also, if you just Google Jadam in PDF, it'll pop up for free on the internet. Um, I actually went to the training in Houston last month. Like the people came in from Korea and were teaching this. Um, I mean, they sell the book, but they do want people to get the knowledge. So I don't feel so bad people going to check and get the book for free online because um, they want people to start using this. But if you are really interested in actually making this, I can deep dive into that and tell you the process for making it. The potassium hydroxide is a very serious chemical. You can burn yourself. This process gets really, 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 really hot, okay? When you add water to this, you have to do it in a heat safe, just like a five gallon paint bucket is good enough, but it's gonna heat up really, really, really hot. Yes, you need to do it outside, well ventilated, um, goggles, gloves, like take it very seriously. Um, you add water, you, and it, this will start to melt down and get really hot. Then you add your oil. Do y'all know those paint mixers? It's like the metal thing you put on the drill. You put that in there and just whip it up for like five minutes and it'll get um, like a looser mayonnaise and it's gonna sit for three days and has to cure. And then you're gonna dilute it with water and this is what you get, okay? Um, I wanted to do the process out here. I can still do it if you don't want to. After, like at the very end, I will do it if anybody's super interested. But I brought a ton of this and I will let y'all take some of this home, okay? Um, so essentially what the soap does is, it, I think it does a, a few different things, but it really just like suffocates the bugs, okay? Like their antenna, 
it confuses them. Um, aphids are like little soft bodied insects and they, um, they just have like an oily exterior to them and they populate super, super quickly. So like if you don't catch these early, in a few days your plants can be covered in aphids. But the soap, it breaks down the oil on their skin and it just like dehydrates them. Um, actually used it in our greenhouse, like it's safe enough to use in the greenhouse, yeah. I have a question, so when you use the soap, isn't there a, I've heard of another soap, a gardener soap, mm -hmm. that's like neem oil mm -hmm. and water and like a drop of dishwashing. Mm -hmm. is, is that, I think that's a little bit safer for just like everyday use. Because making soap, I make soap and it's, it's a caustic yeah. process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have much experience with like using the Dawn stuff. People use it and it's totally great. Um, the only thing is it stinks. The neem oil stinks. You neem oil stinks a lot, yeah. Um, somebody told me something about Dawn soap and I'm forgetting. I don't know why this is better. It's better. But if that's, okay. I mean, th and this is a lot cheaper too to make. Um, I can't, I don't have all the prices with me, but. With, with Jadam, what they're interested in is like empowering people to be able to make all this stuff themselves, like with just simple ingredients. Right. So if like the neem oil that's being shipped around across the world, like from the neem trees and who knows how Dawn is made. So they're just trying to break it down and this is super effective too. So, uh, I have yeah. a question. Uh, yeah. If you use that soap, will that harm the beneficial bugs, like ladybugs? Beautiful question. Yes, this will kill ladybugs. So what you need to do is you kind of need to do a little research on the pests. So you need to be able to identify the pests that are in your garden and kind of know their life cycle a little bit. We have yellow margin leaf beetle. We're going to walk into the garden. All of our mustards look like somebody shot BB gun all over them. And um, I have the beetles and the larva on here. I also have a ladybug. But we try to spray, they recommend spraying early in the morning or later in the evening when bees and like other ladybugs like aren't as active. So you kind of, you do have to keep that in mind. Also, if you have a small garden, you can be really targeted and you can go right to the pest and just squirt them with it. Um, now on a farm scale, it's a little harder. It's not super efficient to go up to every plant and squirt it. So we do use a backpack sprayer. We do tend to spray everything. Um, but yeah, it will kill some beneficial stuff. So you do have to watch out. Um, okay, this alone can be your pesticide and it does work and it's super effective. Um, but there's something else that you can make. It's an herbal solution. And what they recommend is like, you look around your garden farm and you find plants that bugs never eat, bugs, something that bugs never touch. Okay, there's some chemical property in there that is like deterring the bugs from eating them. Okay, so what you do is you get some of that plant material. You need to do this in a very well ventilated area and you boil it for five hours and you take that extract and you get that liquid. So I took rosemary, boiled it for five hours. You can add this to your soap solution and it'll like deter pests and it's so potent that it'll kill pests as well. Okay. Um, well, for five hours. Five hours. Like yeah, just strain it off. You, if you put it in a bottle when it's very, very hot and close it, like y'all can see that this like sucked up and like sealed itself. This is shelf stable for like two or three years. Now, once you open it, I would keep it in the fridge. Like it will start to degrade. But like once the bottle's sealed, it'll be good for a couple years. Um, so if you have a super bad infestation and this isn't help controlling, you can experiment that stuff. Um, what they recommend, the number one thing is ginkgo. We don't have a lot of ginkgo trees here, but if you take the, the leaves and the fruits and boil them, they're in Korea and I think there's like lots of ginkgo trees around. Um, Jerusalem artichoke is a native plant that you can use that's super effective. Um, oleander 
Also, these plants are toxic. Don't do this inside. Do it in a well-ventilated area. Um, but there's lots of options. And if you have any specific pests, this is another Jadam book, but it has like, it goes through every insect and it tells you the dilution that you should put for that pest as well. Okay. Um, all right. So if you're just doing this at home and you have a spray bottle, you want about 25 ounces of water and all you need of this is two teaspoons for this to make the solution. Um, and after you make it, I would use it in about like three days. I think that'll be good. Um, all right, so I'm gonna make some and we're gonna do a live demonstration to see if it, ah! What's that? I can tell you don't cook. Oh, I love to cook. I don't measure stuff though. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. The water that you use is also super important. It needs to be soft water. I believe all of our tap water is soft water here. But a way to test it is if you have hard water, it's not going to foam up. And foams are one of the the parts of this that helps kill the bugs, okay? So to test your water, what you need to do is take a glass of water, put a few drops in it. If your water is, if you have hard water, this will turn really, really milky. And like you'll know instantly that it's not right. If you have soft water, it's gonna have lots of foam at the top. And once this, once it settles out, you'll see it's still pretty clear, but there's lots of foam on top. So I know that my water is good if this i mean i know it's not perfectly clear but you could you would tell if it was our water it'd be like very very milky um so our water is good <clears throat> i'm going to all right and right when i spray it I can see them like they start to squirm. Ah, the larva! Um, like they're immediately starting to squirm and kind of freak out. I mean, it's starting, that might already be dead. So this is a major pest that we have. It's the yellow margin leaf beetle. This is the larva for it and this is the adult. Um, I think the larva has already moved on and then, yeah, I'm just going to leave this and we'll see <laughs> what that's about. Um, do you have any questions so far? So, quick question. Yeah. A lot of modern pesticides say you have to spray and then you have to wait X amount of days for harvest. What's the wait time on this? You can, it's just a soap. You can harvest right away. Um, so I've actually also been using this to wash my dishes now. Um, I mean, it's great. I've actually been putting it in my dishwasher too. So, I mean, this is just the normal soap. The people that, um, created this, they use it for everything. Um, when we went and saw them, they had like another recipe to make like bar soap. It, and they use different types of oils. Um, I'm sure you, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's pretty safe it's just so so it's like washing your produce before you pick it um also if you don't have soft water it'll leave marks and stains on the leaves which you'll notice um okay the last thing i won't get into it a lot but is a sulfur solution that they make in here this is for like super bad pests but also powdery mildew if you've ever grown squash, watermelon, um, cucumbers, like you'll get like a powdery, cloudy on the leaves. It's really hard to control. Um, and it's spread by cucumber beetles. Like when bugs come and eat it, it like lives in them and it's like spread to the plant that way. Um, the sulfur helps control that as well. Um, but this is like a little, I try not to use this a lot. And I use two teaspoons of the soap in here. I would use half a teaspoon of this in here. So it's like, you only need a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. This is for like very serious problems to maintain the powdery mildew. You can help contribute year round by becoming a Walls Project Insider. 
Your reoccurring monthly donation will help fund projects like this, as well as the many other programs hosted by The Walls Project. Learn more about these projects by visiting thewallsproject.org.